Yesterday, CIG opened up the Tech Preview channel to allow us to see all the optimizations they have made in Squadron 42 to Vulcan, often referred to as their Gen 12 renderer, ported into the PU. So I took the opportunity to see what sort of performance changes you should expect. There is a huge caveat here. This being a Tech Preview channel should be considered far more in progress than anything else we usually see in SC, an alpha to the alpha, if you will. With that in mind, the numbers I'm going to show should not be considered final, rather the baseline from which CIG will be improving. From here on out, please feel free to use the chapters to skip any parts you're simply not bothered about. The way I tested this was to walk back and forth between my hab and hangar in area 18. I choose this as it's an easily repeatable loop, with both open and closed off areas that are both easy and difficult for the system to render. This was done three times and all results averaged. Benchmarking was done using Reva Tuna. The system in question is running a 9800X3D, a Radeon 9070XT, 64GB of 6000MHz CL30 memory, with the game installed on a Samsung 990 EVO NVMe drive. Windows has all the latest patches and all drivers are the latest versions. Testing was only done at 1440p due to possible time constraints on the tech preview being up, and was done with all settings at their highest, and again with all settings at their lowest, for both DX11 and Vulkan on the tech preview. Upscaling was set to CIG TSR at native resolution. The same was repeated again in live, where I found that the difference in results was negligible for DX11, so I'm only going to show one. Vulkan did see a notable distance, so will be included for both the tech preview and the PU. Talking of results, let's first take a look at our average frame rates across the board. From the left we have our DX11, Vulcan in tech preview and again in PU, all up to their highest settings. To the right we have the same at low settings. A couple of observations here. The first is that with everything set to high, Vulcan actually sees a slight decrease in average frame rates versus DX11. This was also true in the PU, with Vulcan performing slightly worse than DX11, although in the PU it was slightly better than in the tech preview, although it's close enough to be within margin of error. With everything set to low, however, we see Vulcan take the lead. What's most notable is that for both DX11 and Vulcan in live, dropping the settings only sees around a 4% increase to performance, but in the preview, Vulcan sees a far more substantial 15.5%. Overlaying the maximum and minimum frame rates gives us some insight into these averages. In easy to render areas, Vulcan simply isn't hitting the same maximums at DX11 is, especially at high settings, but the minimums see a substantial increase. That being said, in the PU, the minimums are far higher for Vulcan than they are in the tech preview. Now, this could be environmental, however. This continues when we look at our 1% lows. This is what people are usually referring to when they talk about unstable or sloppy frame rates, it usually presents itself as hitching. Across the board, we see huge gains by switching to Vulcan, doubling or even tripling depending on the settings, and 0.1% lows see the same thing. But again, in the PU, Vulcan gets a much bigger boost over DX11 than it does in the tech preview. If we look at the frame graphs, we get a deeper understanding of what causes all of this. At certain points, DX11 is seeing huge and very much repeatable spikes in frame time, with the Tramroid being a great example of this. Vulcan, however, just doesn't suffer with these same hitches. Now, numbers are great, I love numbers, but they only show one part of the equation. Pun somewhat intended. The real improvement here is the granularity in which we can tweak graphical options in the preview. To demonstrate, here is the PU with its whopping six options. It's a screenshot. Now here's the tech preview with its 17 options. And this allows us to better hone in the experience for our hardware. And whilst on this subject, I have seen some comments from some people saying that the fidelity of the game seems to be increased, lines looking sharper, etc. I personally haven't seen this to be the case. Now, granted, I've not visited the entire game, I simply don't have the time to do that, and so there may be some areas where this is in fact true. At the very most, I have noticed that lighting does look a little bit sharper, but 
you have to see it side by side to even try and notice. Another thing to note is the stability. In the PU, I'm lucky if I can manage more than 10 minutes before I crash whilst using Vulkan, and this has become a much more prevalent issue when I switch to an AMD GPU. In the tech preview, it didn't crash once. One other thing that I should call out is that whilst I did notice my graphics memory actually went down ever so slightly, system memory requirements jumped, going from around 16GB in DX11 to just over 20 in Vulkan. I'm going to be blunt, there is no silver bullet, there is no Jesus tech, except for Steve Burke. If you were expecting this to double your performance, rein your expectations back to reality. What we do see is Vulcan continuing to prove itself as a providing a much smoother experience as opposed to DX11, albeit at the cost of around 5% of your average FPS, but doing so in a much more stable manner than before. For those on higher end hardware, this is not a change you are going to notice, but for those on lower end hardware, the ability to increase FPS by a tangible amount, 15% versus the current 4% you can achieve, just by sacrificing some aesthetics, and with far greater control over what you sacrifice, will be the difference between the game being playable and not. And honestly, the difference between high and low settings aesthetically is really not that big. Leave any thoughts below, and with that, I thank you for watching. Catch y'all next time.